Hello and welcome. You're watching Good Morning India. I'm Gargi Rao. And up first, we're going to get you all the latest from the Congress. That's right. I'm Divya Vadwa. The Congress is said to have a known Gandhi president, Gargi, and this is after almost 20 years. Ashok Gehlot, a Gandhi family loyalist, will be running for party president opposite Shashi Tharoor, who is among those in the party who want major internal reforms. Gargi, Shashi Tharoor was the first to declare his intention to run for that very post and uh, that post that's been with the Gandhis, whether it's Sonia Gandhi or her son Rahul Gandhi and much of 25 years since they've had that post. He's a prominent member of the Congress's G23 or the group of 23 leaders who had written to Sonia Gandhi in 2020 calling for an organisational overall and blaming the party's downward spiral on a leadership drift. Taru met with Sonia Gandhi uh, yesterday. She just returned uh, from a trip abroad for a medical checkup and then he got her go ahead to contest the October 17th election. Then within hours, the, flight, the fight for the Congress top post became considerably tougher with Ashok Gehlot also emerging as the other candidate. Well, let's go across to Harsha uh, now for more. And uh, Harsha, so uh, Ashok Gehlot there set to contest for the Congress president post, something that was being talked about for a while. But what does this mean for the Congress in Rajasthan? Well, yes, absolutely. Uh, Ashok Gehlot's name uh, had come up every now and then. But, you know, everybody did think that probably he's not going to run for president because A, he doesn't want to give up Rajasthan. B, he was the person who moved the resolution in the Congress uh, committee this weekend saying that Rahul Gandhi should be president. So that's the resolution he moved. And then there you have it. Uh, late night development uh, sources close to the Gehlot camp have told us that he's definitely going to be running for president. Uh, he's going to uh, file his nominations um, uh, in the Navratris, which begin on the 26th of September. Uh, so uh, clearly, you know, um, uh, a, a contest for the Congress uh, president. But, you know, interestingly, uh, given his closeness to uh, the Gandhi camp, he's, you know, been um, cabinet minister uh, with Rajiv Gandhi. In fact, Rajiv Gandhi sent him here. Uh, the late Mr. Rajiv Gandhi, uh, late prime minister, sent him here uh, to take over the reins of the Congress. Uh, so given that equation that he shares with the Gandhi family, though Mrs. Gandhi is definitely coming across as neutral, in fact, the Gandhi family is coming across as neutral uh, in this contest. They just met Shashi Tharoor and said, go ahead. But clearly, you know, uh, uh, Gehlot is probably the candidate from the organizational side. Now, what does this mean for Rajasthan? Well, you know, that's really the million dollar question. Who's going to be chief minister? Will it be Sachin Pilot or will it be someone Ashok Gehlot wants? That's all up in the air and I think you've got to keep watching NDTV uh, to get the latest on that. So Gehlot is the person who was pushing for Rahul Gandhi's name to be back as that uh, top leader in uh, the Congress party. But now it's him who's going to be running for those elections which are slated. Uh, the nomination uh, for filing uh, is now slated for three days from now. Well, yes, I think, you know, that was also probably a well thought out strategy to make it clear that, you know, he is probably only stepping in uh, because, uh, you know, the Congress wants an election. So I think that was a very well thought out strategy, perhaps to make it very, very clear where loyalties lie, what they would actually want, uh, and then to take it forward. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, now uh, it's the it's the question of uh, the leadership in Rajasthan, because if he does move to the center, uh, remember, Rajasthan goes into an election in 2023. The BJP does not have a chief ministerial face. If uh, the government in Rajasthan, if the Congress in Rajasthan decides to project a, a dynamic chief minister who can lead them into the next elections, uh, it could make a difference to the Congress's fortunes because in the revolving door of Rajasthan's politics, it's usually one in and out. So it's always BJP out and then Congress in and then Congress out and BJP out um, uh, in. That's the revolving door of politics in Rajasthan. That's been the trend so far. But that could change uh, if the Congress actually, uh, as a well thought out political strategy, uh, projects a strong chief ministerial candidate in the run up to 2023. Right. Well, let's go across to Arvind as well. So, Arvind, uh, this Congress elections become a lot more interesting. And, you know, Shashi Tharoor is somebody who had been for a while making a lot of statements with a part of G23 and a lot of statements about wanting more transparency in this election process. Yeah, Gargi, after a span of over two decades, 
uh, we'll be witnessing elections for the Congress president post, uh, which is uh, scheduled to take place in the second week of October. So it's clear that Shashi Tharoor will be contesting in the Congress president elections and he is expected to file his nominations uh, uh, 25th or 26th because the nominations for the Congress president post will begin on September 24th. But what is uh, uh, very interesting is that uh, Shashi Tharoor met uh, Congress President Sonia Gandhi after he, he gave mixed sing signals that he is likely to contest for the Congress President elections and after, in his meeting with Sonia Gandhi what we are being told is that he did convey his uh, plans to contest uh, for the Congress top post and what we are being told is that Sonia Gandhi made it very clear that it's an open free and fair election anyone can come and contest for this Congress top post and the Gandhi family will not back any particular candidate in fact that was one uh, uh, one uh, thing that uh, Shashi Tharoor also wanted to clear with Congress President Sonia Gandhi because uh, one after another state units are passing resolutions urging Rahul Gandhi to become the Congress uh, President again and that's why in the back, backdrop of that he also wanted to get a, a kind of a message from Sonia Gandhi and Sonia Gandhi made it very clear to Shashi Tharoor that the party high command will not interfere in the election process and then they will not be backing any candidate. That Keeping that aside like how Harsha was also explaining there have been several uh, uh, murmurs in the Congress party a kind of uh, uh, whispers in the Congress party that uh, likely the official candidate of the party will be Ashok Gelot, but here we have to wait and watch uh, when Ashok Gelot will be coming and filing the nomination because uh, we did hear uh, that Ashok Gelot is likely to file his nominations on 25th or 26th of September. So if Ashok Gelot files his nomination, then it will be Ashok Gelot versus Shashi Tharoor. So uh, the Congress president elections uh, after a decade, after two decades, the Congress party uh, will be witnessing elections for the top post. Keeping everything aside, a Congress party is known for all kind of surprises. So uh, we should keep a close watch whether there will be any other contestant or whether uh, anyone from the Gandhi family per se, maybe they might uh, come back into the uh, fray, uh, something that we have to wait and uh, closely watch for because one after another state units are still uh, uh, passing resolutions urging Rahul Gandhi to become the Congress president again and what we are being told is that Rahul Gandhi is also coming to Delhi day after tomorrow because he is currently in uh, Alepi in Kochi uh, wherein he is taking part in the Bar Jodo Yatra and our sources in the Congress party have confirmed to us that that Rahul Gandhi will be taking a break in Kerala and then he will be coming to Delhi where uh, the party leadership will take a final call on this entire election process. Though Rahul Gandhi has made it very clear, he does not want to become Congress president again, but the people close to Rahul Gandhi are still insisting that Rahul Gandhi should become a uh, party president again. So keeping everything in mind, we have to wait and watch for what will be the uh, final uh, outcome of this entire electoral process because the nomination begins only on September 24th. So till then, everything is a speculation, but one thing is clear, Shashi Tharoor is content testing for the top post. Right, uh, Arvind, so it's uh, Congress loyalists uh, versus uh, G23 dissenter. Any murmurs of who could be the favourite? Uh, Sonia Gandhi in, in her meeting with Shashi Tharoor has made it very clear that the party will not be uh, putting any sponsored candidate uh, if there is a contest or if there is elections here. In fact, she, is, uh, she has also underlined it, which was again reiterated by the Congress uh, communication in charge, Jairam Ramesh, that it will be a open, free and fair election. There won't be any sponsored candidate uh, from the Congress uh, leadership, especially current right. leadership, that is Gandhi family. So. Uh, that uh, that's something that the Congress party has been underlining or highlighting throughout. So it's unlikely that the party will be taking an official stand of supporting one candidate. If, uh, if Ashok Gelot is contesting against Shashi Tharoor, though it's, it's the outcome is, is very much uh, everyone it's for everyone to see that uh, people will be supporting Ashok Gelot in the party because the electoral college from uh, all the PCC delegates have to vote. It's almost 8,000 PCC delegates who will be voting for this Congress president and the elections, uh, the results will be out on October 17. So for October 17, we will get to know who will be uh, getting maximum votes and what will be the margin between if Ashok Gelot is contesting against Shashi Tharoor. But everything we have to wait and watch for till the nominations are over. All right, thanks so much, Harsha and Arvind, for joining us there. We're also now joined by Aarti uh, Jairat and Javed Ansari, both very senior journalists uh, who've observed the Congress for uh, you know many many years now. And Aarti Jairat, you just heard uh, what, uh, what what Arvind had to say. Also, still there murmurs that maybe Rahul Gandhi may uh, just contest. How uh, you know, uh, despite all his protests, that he won't. What is your view? Well. <laughs> You know, it's very difficult to second guess, uh, you know, what Rahul Gandhi will do because it's a very, very personal decision. But uh, judging by the manner in which he has steadfastly refused to take on the post of party president, and he has steadfastly refused to let any member of the family be the next, uh, you know, elected party president, 
uh, and you know Rahul is known to be quite op- when he takes a stand he's known to be quite obstinate about uh, you know a decision that he's taken so I very much doubt that he's going to throw his hat into the ring I very much doubt it so I think it really does look like a Tharoor versus Gelot uh, election and um, you know I mean I think the outcome is pretty obvious because you know Gelot is a family loyalist He's an old war horse of the Congress party, been around for decades. He knows many, many more people. And, uh, you know, everybody knows his antecedents as a family loyalist. So I think that, uh, you know, I, I think it's pretty much written, uh, you know, what is going to happen is written on the wall. And Shashi Tharoor may turn out to be the Jitendra Prasad of uh, 2022. <laughs> Right. Uh, Javed Ansari, what's your take on these upcoming elections? And uh, the Gandhis are saying that they're not backing anyone. How true do you think that is? Well, for one, I'm pretty certain that no member of the Gandhi family will contest this election. Two, uh, yesterday uh, when Shashi Tharoor went and called on Mrs. Gandhi, uh, he probably uh, inquired on whether or not any of them were going to contest. It was made abundantly clear that they would not. And Mrs. Gandhi also made it clear to him that they don't have an official candidate. They, the three of them, the three Gandhis will remain aloof and may the best man or woman, whoever decides to contest, win. So there will not be an official candidate. More than the, the election for the presidentship of the ICC, it will be interesting to see what happens for the... Uh, uh, there are going to be elections for... 12 uh, Congress Working Committee members. That is where the real contest will be. That's where the real tug of war will happen. The, as far as the presidentship is concerned, uh, I, and I do believe that elections will do a, a whole lot of good for the Congress party. It will be beneficial for them. They need new faces and new ideas. But this must be a free, fair and a transparent elections. And just l- look at the kind of interest that the ASCC elections are generating. It's already, I mean, for a party which everybody has written off, there is uh, the amount of media space uh, that these elections are enjoying it has to be seen, to be believed. So, yes, there is still a, a lot going for them. But this process has to be free and transparent and it must be seen to be so. Right. Uh, Arti Jairad, now there's been just so much talk of this election and, and it, this is something which many are pinning their hopes on within the Congress that finally to have a, a president in place who's going to be, you know, on the ground, very hands-on, uh, NDTV breaking the news about Shashi Tharoor also throwing his hat in the ring for these Congress elections, but now just hoping they get on with it and, you know, things can move forward. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, I mean, I completely agree with Javed that it's a good thing that there is going to be an election. Uh, because the person who wins, you know, it will increase his authority and stature. Uh, you know, if have if he wins an election and becomes party president, rather than being nominated by the family. But let us be very clear that whoever is the party president will have to work along with the Gandhi family, will have to be in tune with the Gandhi family, because, you know, at the end of the day, the Gandhi family is the mascot of the party. And, uh, you know, so they will have to be, the, the president will have to have a good, comfortable working relationship, especially with Rahul Gandhi, because I think Sonia Gandhi now really wants to officially retire from politics. So it will have to be uh, somebody, you know, the person will have to have a very comfortable relationship with Rahul Gandhi. And uh, we do know that Ashok Hila does enjoy it. Um, they ran a very successful campaign in Gujarat together, uh, you know, five years ago when they almost defeated the BJP. And that was, you know, Ashok Hila in charge of Gujarat and Rahul Gandhi leading the campaign uh, on the ground. So they, they enjoy a very, very comfortable relationship. Um, so, well, let's see. I mean, I don't want to predict the outcome of the election, but I do it feel that Ashok Hilot is certainly, uh, you know, the front runner in this. And, uh, you know, but an election will, uh, if he does win, an election will seal his uh, position as party president because he would have not come in through the back door. He would have, you know, actually sure. walked in after a proper contest. Right. Uh, Javed Ansari, if Ashok Gehlot was to move to the centre,
then who would be filling that vacuum in Rajasthan? Difficult to say. Ashok would want somebody of his choice, but the in public perception, the the one most likely to or expected to replace Ashok Gehlot is Sachin Pilot. A lot of people believe that Sachin was denied his due, and during the after the last elections, because he did all the donkey's work, he did all the put in all the hard yards, and at the and once the results were out, Mr. Gehlot very nicely plonked himself there and got the chief ministership. So there are a lot of people there who believe that such a pilot must be the logical, logically he should be the heir. And such, even now Sachin is very active. Sachin has a lot of support, especially where the youth in Rajasthan are concerned. Mr. Gelot, unfortunately, has run a pretty lackluster government there. And now with the, with what happened in Udaipur, the right, the, uh, the Congress has a mountain to climb in, uh, in Rajasthan. In fact, it might do Ashok Gehlot a lot of good if he moves away from there. And then if they, if they have an adverse result, then he can blame it on his successor saying that had I been there, it would have, it would have been all hunky dory. Or although those who know Rajasthan better will tell you that the going is going to be very, very tough for the Congress. Well, Rajasthan is a state that we, you know, usually does go from BJP to Congress and Congress to the BJP. Arti Jera, quickly your comments on that and then we'll wrap this. Yes, uh, I, I mean, I think it's a really a billion dollar question. And I believe when what I'm told uh, is when Ashok Gehlot met Sonia Gandhi before she went abroad uh, and uh, she, you know, sort of, um, you know, he, she, he did ask that if he were to contest uh, who would be his successor, you know, I mean, he wanted to know what would happen in Rajasthan. And I believe uh, she told him quite clearly, you leave that decision to us. You know, you just, you know, do what you have to do. So um, I think that, uh, you know, Sachin seems to be the, you know, again, the front runner, you know, for to be his successor. And, uh, you know, as you said, that it's a revolving door arrangement in Rajasthan. So most likely, even though the BJP has a lot of internal dissensions and they're not very clear about uh, Vasundhara right. being the chief ministerial face and... Uh, she and, you know, a lot of uh, local BJP leaders and RSS leaders do not get on. So despite the dissension, you know, it, 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 I mean, if, if, if history repeats itself, the BJP will win. So, you know, then Ashok Khelot, uh, have, having moved to the center, he will escape the blame for that defeat. Right. Uh, you know, and uh, Sachin will have to work, if he becomes chief minister, will have to work doubly hard to get the Congress back in after five years. All right. Well, thank so, you so much uh, both for joining really, us. You know, ahead. All uh, right. We're completely out of time. Ahead. Thank you so much both for joining us on the program this morning. Uh, with that, time for us to slip into a short break. Here's an update for country. You on the outside. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Chief Election Commissioner Rajiv Kumar has written a letter to the Law Ministry to cap the cash donations to political parties. In this letter written to Union Law Minister Kiran Rijiju, the Chief Election Commissioner proposed to cap cash donation at 20% or at 20 crore, whichever is lower. Right, uh, Gargi, the Election Commission has proposed of bringing down anonymous political donations from 20,000 rupees to 2,000 rupees to cleanse election funding of black money. If the EC's proposal is approved by the Law Ministry, all donations above 2,000 rupees shall be reported through the contribution report, thereby enhancing transparency in funding. In other news, Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee gave an exoneration of source to the Prime Minister on the issue of businessmen under the radar of investigative agencies fleeing the country. That blame, she said, actually points to the Union Home Ministry controlled by Union Home Minister. So basically, Kargi, she's blaming Amit Shah. That's right. So these comments were surprising uh, for Mamta Banerjee, who's always been an aggressive critic of the Prime Minister and Amit Shah. Uh, the BJP Suvendu Adhikari, her former aide, suggested and he tried to explain it, saying that she was trying to help her nephew and party MP Abhishek Banerjee, who's being questioned by the enforcement directed in connection with the coal scam in the state. <laughs> I mean, I don't have a question about the Japanese Shobiku, the Hollywood Mukta, the 
Welcome back. BJP's Maharashtra unit president Chandrasekhar Bhavankule on Monday has claimed that 259 candidates supported by his party and 40 nominees backed by Eknath Shinde faction of the Shiv Sena were elected as sarpanches in the just held elections to Gram Panchayats in the state. A voting for elections to 547 Gram Panchayats spread across 16 districts of the state was held on Sunday. 76% turnout was reported. The elections were held on non-party basis and counting of votes at Took up uh, was uh, taken up on Monday, and besides elections to Gram Panchayat, direct polls for the post of village sarpanches were also held, uh, with the BJP claiming uh, to have got a majority there. Asa hai ki acha Gram Panchayati cha nikalani, amcha Shiva Sena Bharatiya Janata Party yuti ye chawar shikka murtab kela hai. Ani tumi. शिंदे गट जे मनता है हा शिंदे गट नहीं हि शिवसेना है तिक शिलक सेना है तैमे हि जी मुख्य शिवसेना जी आम सोबत आई है जी बाहबाने प्रेरित विचारा चलना हिंदुत्वा चलना शिवसेना है ती शिवसेना भारतीय जनता पार्टी की जी युति है ते आम युति लूर्णपने लोकानी स्वीकार है साढ़े पांचे पैकी तीन शे पेक्षा जास्त ठिका सन्मान्य मुख्यमंत्री शिंदे साहब हैं नेतृत्व शिवसेना भारतीय जनता पार्टी अठिका निवड़ आलो आहोत मत कि भविष्या की नांदी है All right, let's go across to Sohit for more. And Sohit, what do we make of this? Because both the BJP is claiming a you know big win, and the MVA partners are also claiming a big win. Uh, well, a uh, reason why uh, this is happening is because Sardi, these elections are not contested on party symbols, and it totally depends on. Uh, which party is supporting the gram panchayat or the sarpanch who has won the election and that is why a uh, lot of confusion is being done as of now uh, while uh, the bjp claims uh, that uh, they have won the maximum number of seats we now heard devendra patnavi saying that uh, shinde and bjp together have won more than 300 seats it is also important what he has said he said that shinde sena uh, which means the shinde camp is the actual shiv sena and he called uddhav thakre's camp as shillak sena which means the remaining sena so this is what is being claimed by uh, the uh, bjp that they have been able to win uh, with uh, 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 eknath shinde and they have got the maximum seats on the other hand the uh, ncp which is on number 2 uh, is also saying that the mv has won a uh, uh, maximum number of seats so as of now if we get the details uh, as per the information till late night the results of a total of 494 gram panchayat elections were out bjp is the single largest party which has 144 seats ngp is on the second number with 126 seats congress has won 62 seats shinde camp has won 41 and uddhav camp has won 37 so out of 494 bjp and shinde camp has won 185 whereas mv has won 225 now this is based on what we have received till last night now there are other counting going on as well but devendra fadnavis is claiming that they have won a total of more than 300 seats uh, out of the total 680 so this is what is being claimed but as of now we can't be sure at the moment and it will take some more time because even the election commission has been saying that since this election has not been uh, uh, fought uh, by uh, has not been fought on the name or in the symbol of the party we can't be saying but yes as of now what we can say is that uh, in several places like dhule and nandurbar the bjp is ahead so this was uh, is uh, the information that we have as of now but yes claims are being made by both at bjp the mva or the bjp both of them have been claiming that they have won right. maximum number of seats so it just stay on with us we also have clyde castro ncp leader joining us on the phone line uh, clyde castro what do we make of this with the bjp claiming uh, you know this uh, victory of sorts uh, in in these uh, panchayat elections but uh, the mv is also claiming to have got the numbers yeah, well good, uh, good morning this is clyde castro well it, it's not surprising you know bjp seems to be making all sort of claims you know and they've been doing it all around but i have also got figures like you know, probably you have got the figures you know i mean if you go by figures it's not the question of claiming but if you go by figures well the bjp and the shinde camp has got about 185 seats and the mahavika sagadi that is the ncp congress and shiv sena together have about 225 seats so the point here is very clear that it's not the question of claiming it's the numbers that matter 
So they can go to town and claim whatever they want to claim, but the uh, truth is right in front of you. Right. So, Sohit, uh, well, again, it's, you know, claim versus claim right now, which we're, which we're getting from Maharashtra regarding these elections. And how important are these elections? Elections, but through these Gram Panchayat elections, we come to know that in rural Maharashtra, who has a, a good hold. And this is important for the Devendra Pandavis and uh, Shinde camp because they have recently come into power. And that is why they also want to show that they have the numbers with them, they have the figures with them and the people are standing with them. So that is the reason why uh, Devendra Pandavis has been claiming about this since yesterday. The viewers also need to remember that in the coming uh, time there are municipal corporation elections that are going to happen as well. But as I said, these are claims that is being made by the political parties because the uh, election commission has uh, said that these elections are not contested on party symbols so it won't be easy. Uh, uh, for uh, them also to say that who has the highest uh, number of figures. Right. So also, uh, out of the data, who has more uh, serpents, we'll also come to know about that uh, in some time. But uh, that is why it is important because the number of serpents a political party has uh, with them will also be able, to, they'll also be able to claim so uh, that much of support, at least in rural Maharashtra. So that's why these elections are important. But yes, as of now, what we can say, is that these are claims that are being made by the BJP as well as the MVA government, right. and, so, uh, the former MVA government, and both of them are claiming to be having the maximum number of figures in their favour. Right, and Clyde Castro, this comes at a time when there's still, you know, a lot of uh, th this uh, tussle between the two factions of the Shiv Sena, and in fact, the BJP taking great pleasure in saying that Uddhav Thakre's faction got the least number of seats. Well, you know, the, the BJP can keep talking. If you if you see the reality. The, the so-called, you know, uh, Shinde Shiv Sena has got no legal standing at the moment. It's a matter of sub judice, it's in the court. I mean, those questions will always be asked. So, see, BJP is trying to play with the minds of the people, saying that they've got the maximum number. They can keep doing that. I mean, it won't make a difference to the ground reality. The fact of the matter is, after, you know, coming uh, into government and uh, the Shinde camp claiming uh, 40, 50 MLAs, look at the results. I mean, the ground reality shows that the people are not happy with what has happened. So they are showing out in numbers here. If, if, if they have to talk about claims, see, there's a uh, whole talk about claims. There's no question of claims. The number is in, you know, numbers are in front of you. You can see the numbers. And if you go by the numbers, the Mahavika Sagadi is definitely doing much better than in the kind of uh, claims. Right, it's difficult to make out in the numbers given that it's not be, it wasn't fought on party symbols. But thank you so much for joining us there, Clyde Castro. Videos that show food being served in a toilet complex to Kabaddi players from Uttar Pradesh during an under-17 state-level tournament for girls in Saharanpur have gone viral and uh, it's led to a lot of outrage and anger on the way athletes are being treated and leading uh, to a uh, demand for clarification uh, from the government as well. All right, just take a look at how those, uh, that, uh, those, that team is being served food inside the toilet. So as we said, since these videos have gone viral, it's led to a lot of anger. And this was a shot by some players themselves, showing them picking up rice and vegetables from different containers inside the toilet complex. Uh, the second video also shows workers picking up utensils and pans from inside the toilet complex. Uh, the government official in charge of arrangements said the food was served in the swimming pool and kept in the changing room because of unavoidable reasons, claiming it was not the bathroom, but actually it was a changing room. And because of the rain uh, that they were, that the food was kept there, that's what the regional sports officer of Saharanpur has said in response to questions. Well, news now from Bengaluru and the anti-encroachment drive that is underway in eastern Bengaluru after the flooding that took place there. Now located in Mahadevapura, Bengaluru East, two villas in the Uber Ridge, Purvankara Park Ridge have been named in a VIP encroachers list according to the civic body BBMP. Now the Puravankar Purva Park Ridge has 149 villas, each having three or four bedrooms. Of these two villas located just across the tech park's boundary wall were found to have encroached 
on drains of around 2.5 meters speaking exclusively to NDTV. Mr. Abhishek Kapoor, the CEO of Pura Vankara said that if there is violation, it will definitely be, it should definitely be demolished. We went on to see when we were doing the ground report. What we did, of course, witness is that when the survey was being done by the BBMP officials, we could clearly see that there is a 2.4 meters of encroachment, which they allege, and also the two villas, which are partially sitting on top of a stormwater drain. Of course, that was an allegation. But just adjacent to that, when we came, crossed on to Bagmanetek Park, what, where, what we went on to see there is that they had called in the JCB, they broke open the slab, and right underneath that was a stormwater drain. And still we could see the uh, stormwater drain, which is, you know, of course, that's been blocked by them, which gave us an understanding that there is a stormwater drain under those two villas as well. What happened? Um, Srija, thank you um, for having me on the show. Uh, so essentially what has happened as far as that development is concerned, this is, this is a development that was carried out as per CD, CDP plan of 1995. The development sanction was received in 2004, basis which the development was done, which was complete in 2008, since 2008 till about now, which is about almost 15 years, people have been living, living there peacefully. Um, now what happens uh, as a concept is that we go to the authority and we uh, propose a plan based on the existing zoning and the uh, CDP plan of that area at that point in time and the authority approves it. Now before any authority approves a CDP plan, they take suggestion objections from everybody including other government authorities, public at large etc etc. Now in this particular case obviously that process must have been carried out and uh, BDA would have taken a plan, plan uh, approved a plan basis that whole process. Once that is done, no developer or no city um, resident developers are also residents we don't want to build anything and we are creating spaces for residents of the city so nobody does development which goes beyond and bda is authorized to sanction the development plan of the area for any project now here comes bbmp which has no locus standy at this point in time bbmp was to if they had any objections if they had any concerns should have raised i'm sure at that point in time when the uh, cdp was approved by bda prior to that